you, you, it, it doesn't work that way. I'm not, I'm not going to die, man. Nothing's going to happen. So I don't have to worry. Right? So, you know, you hear I, I have a storm coming. Like, and you said, nothing's going to happen to me, man. I go outside there. They get stuck. And you freeze to death. So, why you think the cold is going to say, well, oh man, you know, I'm not going to freeze him. The freeze you just the same. You couldn't care less. Right? So I'm just trying to say to you, try to act like, you know, brush it off, like, you know, brush it off, brush it off. It means nothing. It means nothing. Because these things were pre preordained before the world began by the Almighty. Just like, oh, when you were born, right? When you were born, sometimes a person is trying to have a baby for the longest while and no baby can have. Then after maybe 10 years, all of a sudden, the wife was winding. Why she feel this kind of way? She could duck in the car. You know, you know, honey, that's the same pregnant. So what? You didn't make it happen. But there was a time for you, and your time came. Right? I know people like that, 10 years, waiting, until I'm mostly like frustrated. You see? That's why we Abraham and Isaac, uh, Abraham and Sarah, they wait till he was 100 years old, uh, 99 years old, before he, he actually conceived. She was um, 89 years old and he was 99 years old, right? And to wait until that time. But what could you do? And when the time came for you to die, you can't say, I don't want to die, I don't want to, whatever, whatever. And all the doctors are going to do pronounce you dead. The doctor himself is going to die too. So I'm saying, don't push these things away. I just think that, well, it will just go away like that. Because this is, a, it is your life. Choose life, eternal life. Let me finish up this reading here because there's something really serious here which you need to cover. The Lord said here, Watch ye, he said, then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. You see how serious it is? So close. So close. But as I said to you, when the chariot of fire came down from heaven for Elijah, he was walking with Elisha. But the chariot didn't make any mistake. The chariot didn't come and say like, try to take up Elisha and they say, oh, no, 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 it wasn't you I want. I bring him back and say, no, it was Elijah I want. The chariot knew which one he came from. And he just, whoosh, gone with Elijah. And I'm not saying Elisha was condemned. But this is what is going to happen in the last stage. That the one who is left behind will be kind of them. That's what's going to happen. For real. You see? And there will be no mistake as the Bible said the angels of God send them out with the great sound of a trumpet. I remember we spoke last week about the seventh trump. That's the last trumpet. Right? That's, um, I didn't... Verse 31, right? That's the last trump. And then, all the saints of God will be gathered from all over the world. Those who are left behind, they are condemned. And God is not going to make any mistake. The Bible said, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. And there's another scripture talking about them being in the bed, right? The one, right? The angel just snatch up, snatch up that one, and the other left. Okay? They're buried together, husband and wife. One come out of the tomb, and the other left. It could be two taken out of the tomb. I could be none. You see that you have to understand the spirit of what the Bible was saying. And I say that it always going to be one and leave one. But it's just saying that God is making a, a selection. And that's why the Bible talks about the elect. 
Remember that word? As I said, pay attention to it. Three times it's here in the scripture. The elect. Right? Elect as Paul said, according to the foreknowledge of God. So he said now, watch therefore, for ye know not what hour ye Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. That, that, that verse resonates in my spirit that you may be talking about before. Right? Remember he said in verse 42, he said, Watch. We know not what hour your Lord has come. But down in verse 44, is even more serious. He said, He said, In such an hour you think not. I know this scripture keeps saying an hour. So those of you who keep saying, well, We don't know what lies when you're going to come. It's about, it could be another millennium or whatever, whatever. Watch the signs. You'll be able to tell. You won't be able to tell the hour, the day and the hour, but you'll be able to tell that it's about to happen. And, it's, and some of us, we, we are more taken up with, like, we want to know about things that pertain to the coming of the Lord. But the Bible said the day of the Lord is not light but darkness. What you need to do, is to have on a wedding garment and have it spotless and ready. That is the first thing. Because the point is, is that if you're not ready, you're going to see it happen and be left behind. So how does that help you? Right? So it's like a man, he's watching for the train and they have a coffee shop by the, tr the train, like what happened in hard still, right? And he's inside. He's waiting for the train, but he's having his coffee or whatever, so forth. And he's waiting for the train. For some reason he might have been a phone call or whatever. And then when he realized the train is outside, he runs outside to catch the train. All you see that he took the door closed and the train pulled off. He was waiting, but he wasn't ready. He was at the right place too. I mean at the right spot, I would say. But the right spot part really was not just to be in the in the area which some of us are like that we want to be in the area you know as long as we in the area we can't hear the word of God we can't hear it you know it can't come out to no what he needed to have been was on the platform right on the platform and in fact line up himself with where one of the doors is right you know the subway when people know they line up with the one in the front car the back car the middle car wherever they want to be you know they know exactly where to stand so when the door open, they can go right in. Line up yourself! Right? That's it. Amen? Hallelujah. And then the scripture said, the scripture said, in such an hour you think not. You can't figure out God, how God is going to do it. Right? So, and that's the thing that I tell you resonates my spirit. So you might be just driving to work or you could be in your bed, I don't know where you're going to be in supermarket, you don't know. That's why I have to be ready. Because you see it happen and get nothing out of it. Like the man who saw, he never believed the Lord could bring food like that for the Father. And the prophet told him, so in 24 hours, he said, what? He said, God couldn't do that. He said, alright, you're going to see. But you get none. None of it. A trumpet to death. Right? Remember that story? So the Bible said, now, now, now this is a warning, and a warning to us now. So Christ said, our Lord said, Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom the Lord has made rule over his, house, his household, to give them meat in due season? I am one of the ones that Yes. He said, Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. So if you come and find, you're doing exactly the work, feeding, the, the, the word, the um, people, with the word of God, you say you are blessed. But look what happened. You say some of them not going to get the blessing. Because he said, verily I say unto you, you shall make him rule over all his goods. You're going to be blessed, right? But if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delays his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him 
And an hour that he is not aware. See the boy, an hour keeps coming up, right? An hour. You see? It was it was like the smallest time measurement of time they had in those days. And the Bible keeps saying hour. So now we have minutes and we have second and, and millisecond and nanosecond and all man, whatever. Right? But we say minute and we use second. But it's hour. They say they don't know the exact. But he said the Lord is gonna come in an hour, he's not ready for him. And the, and he shall cut him asunder and and appoint him with the portion of the hypocrites. They shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, grinding of teeth. Right? My God. As I said to you, before I go, go back, I'm going to talk something about the wise man. He said, the Lord has made him rule over his goods. He said, if he's doing the work, he's a bit blessed. Right? But how many people are today, as far as preaching the gospel is concerned, it's about money. As I told people, they sent to me for money. I tell them, I don't, I, not because you see me preaching the gospel. You have a mother that's got to think you have money. Remember I told the story about the, 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 the train with the, the preacher coming and he, he gleaning uh, uh, offering, then the next one come again, he glean after him, and then another one come after him, he glean after him. Till when he came to the fourth one, there was nothing left. <laughs> oh, I mean, you know, I was young. I think I told you that it, that it, it said happened with my... Anyway, I just went on the train for the experience uh, at the time. And I tell you, that was it. They figured out once they begin to preach, boy, and I've heard people say, you know, um, give you spiritual things, you must give me the carnal things. So they get caught up with it, right? Which Paul said he didn't do that, the apostle. So I'm saying, he said it was okay, but I'm saying people get caught up with this, right? So after a while, they're giving the people smooth things, they're giving the things that they want to hear, and they themselves are not ready. You see? And I said, and I heard about this, this man, he, he, would, he would preach the gospel, and I heard he would preach very well. But then he would leave right out of the church and go and come in a critic. And I said to myself, how oh, does somebody have a nerve to do something like that? I mean, you have no fear of God? Right? So I'm saying, hey! Right? But after a while, some people who are in, in the ministry, Act like they have shares in the business with God. And that's one thing you don't do. You have no shares in this business. Okay? This is not a stock market where you have God that is the CEO and then you can buy shares in the company. You have no shares in God's business. Every man is just a servant, the Bible says. After you have done all that God commanded you to do, you're still a servant. Right? You see, angels ever consider themselves like they have shares in God's business? Remember we talked about angels and we're going to talk more about them. They just, God tell them something. I told him, you know, they said, oh Lord, you know, he told Gabriel, um, go down and, and speak to Daniel and give him some understanding. And he said, oh, you know, you know, Master, um, I, 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 I intended to go over to Australia and, and uh, I intended to go to, to like this planet or uh, some other place. And, and uh, he said, you know, um, could I get excused? Uh, uh, and he said, well, maybe I have to cancel my appointment and go on. No! I have no other agenda but what God gives them. If God didn't tell them something, then they didn't have nothing to do. That's it. But they always have something to do. God tells them these things thousands of years in advance. Right? That's why these devils come down here with some knowledge. Okay? And it's okay, they were in heaven. See what I'm saying? So all these things I tell them on top of eat, eat the food and it's like heaven. They have no idea what, what, what heaven is about. But the devils know. Right? And I tell you, they live in a virtual life where they, they can only remember the things that like their mind looking at these things like these dumb things they put over their face. They tell us it makes you feel like you are um, in a game when you're not in a game. You're like a dummy. You're not in a game. You're in an illusion. Right? You're just in the game. Why are you what? Why are you, are you throwing a ball? Are you, what are you doing? Batting? What are you doing? Are you sweating? And are your muscles working? Why are you? 
It's an illusion you're in. And these things are never good people. Because that's how they are today. They have an illusion. They can't remember heaven. Or the glories of heaven. And the beauty and all these things. But they can't go there. It's virtual thing that's for them. That's what them. That's all they can have. Right? And that's what they want you to have too. But if you want to exchange the joys of, 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 of eternity for that, you made a, a bad choice. The Bible said God is going to catch them and going to cut them in pieces, I'm telling you. You see? I told you about that very same man there. And I used to go into the nursing home and minister with him and his wife. You know? And when I, when I first went to see him, when I first went there uh, with his wife, I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go. And I heard about the devils which were who up on her and I um, and I stopped what happening. And the Lord said to me, you're going to see her. So I don't fight with God. I, ne I never did. You know, so I just went to the, the see her. And I sat her down. I sat down there by her bedside. And I said to her, tell me what's going on with you. And I, I listened to her talking about, as she talking about, I think it was one hour. And I said to her, okay, all of these stories I've told you now, today is the last day, the last day for that. I, I just told her, my faith, God is going to change. Because I know why I went there. I didn't just go there to visit her. Because if I was that alone, I wouldn't have gone. I wouldn't, because when I heard of something that happened there, I said, I don't, want to, I don't want to touch it. I want to go get involved. I said, today is the last day. Right? By faith. And she, she said, she confessed, her whole life changed immediately after that. Right? She said she felt like the devil to lift off of her, the whole thing lift off of her from that day. And I don't ask, ask her nothing. Else. Because when the Lord send me something, I don't ask people like, how are you feeling? Well, I don't ask them nothing. It's not, it's not me. I just do what God tells me and I'm gone. Left up to him. To do, do what he needs, what he's gonna do. But I heard our own confession because the doctor cut off one of the legs and the other leg was gonna cut off because the whole thing was black or whatever, and the whole thing changed off back. Nice clear skin afterward, come back afterward. So at least she had one leg left. But her, her husband, who is that man I'm talking about, who used to preach the gospel, I couldn't understand something about him. That that woman got so attached to me that it's like. She almost want to worship me, so after a while I stopped visiting her, I cut down my visiting to her. I said, she needs to pray for herself, and I associate herself with kind of guys with God. Not me, I'm not a medium, I saw me in the middle. I just go in and help, and then she needs to make her own connection, which she didn't understand, she must do that. But every time when a woman asks me to pray for her for healing, she'll get healed. But her husband never got healed. And I couldn't understand it. Speaking in tongues sometimes and whatever, and whatever, whatever, it wouldn't heal. Until one night, was a Friday night, what we call it, Sabbath night, I went to visit them. And the devil came between me and the man and told me, leave him alone. He said, it's mine. I was stunned. So leave him alone. 